it's Sunday, May 20th, 2012. This month's really flying by quickly. Um, anyway, I haven't achieved yet. <laughs> um, today I'm going to um, try to work on the rest of the underneath of that uh, uh, crew cab truck in the garage so that all the work that's left to be done is topside so I can pull it out. If I can, I'm hoping to pull it out uh, today or tomorrow, so let's see if I can pull that, uh, put that exhaust in there, which is, which is the main uh, bitch about it. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty much it. And this sucker's heavy. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, rear uh, drive shaft for the uh, crew cab. I'm going to paint it a second coat before I take off and uh, do it before I install it. Um, I'm going to paint this blazer cross member while I'm at it too. First coat. Yeah, painting this just finished off that can perfectly, so that's ready to dry. It's about 70 something degrees, 73 degrees I think it was. So I'm now going to do the uh, blazer with this. i got to start working on this project soon. <clears throat> I want to get <clears throat> this is a 550 XT Yamaha. I want to get uh, get this uh, rolling. <laughs> this thing would get probably 70 miles a gallon, which would save a pile of money. This is a combo road street bike. Or, or off-road street bike. I get this running, then I'll uh, pull it out and put it somewhere else, and I'll bring in the uh, big motorcycle and uh, work on that. Once that's running, I think I might take a break and go down to visit my sister and brother-in-law down in Texas for a little bit on that motorcycle. The other one, not this one. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is bring some tools home and pull the drive shaft out of this one too. This one needs a carrier bearing. If I can pull that out, I can start working on unpressing the carrier bearing. There's a lot of bees in this one. I don't know why the bees like this truck so much. But, um, yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll uh, chalk it up so it doesn't roll. And uh, pull the drive shaft. This one would be a good one to be running. This is the front uh, flywheel cover of the truck. I'm gonna take this upstairs and clean this in the with uh, dishwashing fluid in the bathtub. Get this real clean. I can uh, paint it with engine paint. May not even need to be painted. It almost looks like it's stainless. I doubt if it is. I'm going to paint it anyway. Yeah, good old Palmolive pal dishwashing detergent. That should take the grease off of this thing. Yeah, what a mess. I'll let this soak in a couple of seconds. <laughs> Let's have to do it a few times. There it is. It's pretty clean. Um, all the grease deposits are off of it anyway. I you get some high heat primer. Um, and some engine paint. I don't think it's stainless because it's got rust starting over here. So if it is stainless, it's a real crappy grade of it. This is what's aggravating. George keeps covering my toolbox with all this crap. Well, it's not crap, but it shouldn't be here on top of my toolbox lid because i got to get at my tools. Well, I guess I'll let this dry, then I'll take it in and I'll uh, give it another coat tomorrow. This one's still drying. Uh, once it dries enough, it's still tacky. Once it dries enough, I'll uh, throw it in the trunk and uh, go install it. 
I'm hanging out downtown waiting for George. He went to go get cigarettes at the uh, grocery store down the street. That looks like he can't get in. It's probably closed. <laughs> That's funny. He doesn't know what hours anybody has. And he's still standing there. It's Sunday. They probably close Sundays. <laughs> he's still standing there like he can't figure out what's going on. Weird. Anyway. For some reason, that other cigarette store <clears throat> had the open sign on, but nobody was there. So we went to this one. So, are you happy now, George? Uh, so you did a lot of shopping. No. Oh, thank you. It's just bulky shit, that's all. It's just sold in bread. <laughs> It's cigarettes. They say why the other store was closed? I didn't okay, cool. This dried up pretty good. It's ready. I'm just going to put this away till tomorrow. I'll uh, let that dry some more and then I'll do another coat on it. Alright, I'm back at the truck unit. I put all those little pins back in here. And I lubricated it with the uh, high temp bearing grease, actually, which is actually better than the original grease that they put in there. So I shouldn't have any problems with it in theory. <laughs> I have to hold this in when it is in there because it's got pressure. Feels okay. Alright. Now I'll install this thing. I, oh, I gotta put um, never seize on these end caps. You can see where it seized up before. It was a real pain in the butt to get these off. In the rest. Yeah, this stuff's like the messiest stuff ever. I'm using the uh, Napa version. And shook it up and uh, oh, it's just horrible. Didn't want to wash you off. But it works good and that's what counts. You want to put a real light coat on all the way around. Yeah, it got just like that. You could do the uh, part it's going into as well, but I'm not even going to bother. It's not worth it. Next time I take this apart, hopefully, in theory, I'll have enough money to replace the U-joint. Um, you can see how much of a pain it is to get off your hands. Yeah, you can see my crappy paint job. If this was a restoration project or a normal vehicle, I'd uh, get more carried away with aesthetics, but really this is just mostly for protection since it's a work truck. Some part it's that but not that much. Anyway, this um, is a little end cap that goes on there. I'm going to never seize the uh, threads of that, and I'm going to never seize the inside of this spline a little bit, real light. That should do the trick. I don't remember if I mentioned, I probably did, but um, when I had the caps off of the wheel bearings of the um, Universals, I uh, used wheel bearing grease on it instead of normal general purpose grease. This stuff is really good grease. And you can see what I'm talking about up there, I think. The little uh, end cap that screws on. When you take it apart, you gotta screw it off. This one, <laughs> when I took it apart, it was already off. I don't know what kind of backyard mechanics are working on this. They really, they weren't really good at what they were doing. Um, looks pretty crummy. I think I might just never seize uh, the little U parts of that, just so it doesn't uh, keep resting. Of course, the sucker won't go up on there <laughs> easily. I can see it is a keyed spline. You can see where one of the uh, 
splines right there is uh, like a double spline. They do that for balance because what they do is they balance the whole thing as an assembly and uh, they want to match it up. They don't balance each individual shaft. If I was doing this and redoing this, out of each individual shaft balanced separately so it wouldn't matter. Um, it makes a lot more sense than balancing the whole assembly really. It's a miracle. I got it on there. I got this thing hand tight. And what I'll do is I'll use a pipe wrench or something, you know, and gently tighten it. <laughs> You know, you gotta watch what you're doing when you're using a pipe wrench, but that's what you want to use is channel locks or something. Or a pipe wrench to, uh, or big vice grips to, uh, tighten it. You just want it so it's not gonna come off, but you don't need to get carried away. Okay, I'm gonna take these and, uh, do the U part on the inside with Never Seize. It'll keep it from seizing. Rust-wise, it will probably wouldn't seize anyway, but it, I mean, it'll keep it from uh, the rust from getting carried away on it. There they are, all nice and purdy now. I'm gonna never seize the uh, uh, the back uh, part. Man, it's almost like they had this parked in a swamp. <laughs> well, that phone call was my brother-in-law Al in Texas. He said I need a haircut. Anyway, I'm having a heck of a time getting this uh, U-joint bolted in. It's going in hard. Hopefully I get it balanced right. Alright, that's that. I know the lighting's pretty crappy under here. But, the drive shaft's all hooked up now. I hit the emergency brake cable on right. We got a wire overlapping it wrong, and I got to get this exhaust in. I'm gonna start working on the exhaust tonight. I brought the uh, Y pipe with. Oh no, I'm not, because I got to paint that. Crap! I got to get some paint. Oh yay! I had some high heat paint left over. High heat white from the um, Honda project, brake project from before, if you remember. Yeah, I'll paint this Y pipe right here on the ground so that the way the welds will be protected. This is a custom Y pipe. So and it was done just by the guy looking at the other one, so hopefully he did it right. Okay, I got a first coat painted on that. I'm going to uh start pulling some of this stuff out of this garage to the other garage kind of too dark to film. <laughs> Most of it's um, boxes. So I just stuff everything into that next door garage. Just so that this is ready to clear. I still have a few days to clear it, so no big rush. Well, this thing's being kind of ornery. All the dark shadows keep popping out of it, so I'm going to have to let it totally dry and I'll do another coat tomorrow. I'm going to put this on like the day after tomorrow or something. See where I'm at. i got to grease that anti-sway bar. It's got special high-performance bushings I put on it. i got to make sure that all those uh, bolts are tight. This right wheel seems to have more friction than it should. I have to pull that off and check it. So the last thing I need is bearing burning up on me. So I may have put the bearing on and just overdid it. This one seems okay. And the emergency brake cable I gotta fit on, but I can't really do that until uh so I get these, um, so I get this exhaust on. I'm not sure if these are female or male ends on these manifolds. If they're female, I have to get a, get a 
donut caskets. Alright, I'm going to weed out some of these blazer parts. The torque converter, that's for the blazer. Some other stuff, that little cap. Anyway, I'm going to bring them over to uh, the processing garage. Along with some other stuff. Well, there's a small load of stuff to bring over to the processing unit. Alright, I'll let that dry till tomorrow and I'll give it another coat. It's really not that much stuff in here to move out. I moved, I have a bunch of stuff in the car right now to bring to the, to the processing unit. I <clears throat> just have this little corner with some car parts and that pump. I got all this cardboard to get out of here. I'll probably bring my truck and move that all in one shot, whatever doesn't fit in the uh, next door neighbor uh, um, unit. And miscellaneous tools. I should be able to pull this truck out within a couple days. And I'll uh, spend the rest of the time cleaning it up and getting that other trailer. Well, here it sits, this next project waiting for me to get to it. Had a lot of empty boxes already on the top of that Jeep. Maybe I'll throw a bunch more on top of that since there's some already started there. brought some stuff on top of the trunk and I brought my bricks here. Looking forward to once this blazer's done, then all of this processing area be open again and I can start on this Jeep. Well, that's it for today at this storage unit. I go home and uh, maybe I go out to the Elks or something, run a cab. Well, I'm going to have hamburgers for dinner. Um, i got to heat it up so that that wax paper comes off. I'm cooking these ones from frozen, so... Yeah, looking good. They cook them medium rare nowadays because they really don't have any quality control of the plants anymore. So you, I love them rare, but I don't trust them. Yeah, a little Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce and some pepper and some ketchup. And I cooked it in Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce and uh, a couple packets of Taco Bell mild sauce on top of it, cooking it in. It's about it for today. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to get up and uh, work on that truck again. Um, I don't know what else. So... My focus is in the next 10 days finishing and clearing that garage. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.